my vintage Christmas tree skirt. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Tiffany. In this video, I'm gonna share with you how I made my vintage crochet Christmas tree skirt. I'm so excited about this video and I can't wait to begin. So when it comes to the level of this crochet pattern, it's actually a beginner friendly pattern. It looks like a pattern that you would see an expert level crocheter do or an intermediate level crocheter do. So when I say it's a beginner friendly pattern, we're gonna have some fun. The terminology I'm gonna use is all US terminology. So whenever I'm referring to the name of a stitch, it's all US terms. When it comes to the dimensions of the Christmas tree skirt, I'm actually leaving that open-ended so that way you can adjust this Christmas tree skirt to fit your Christmas tree. So whether or not your tree is a real tree with varying uh, circumferences or it's a fake tree like mine's a fake tree and it's just got like a post that you're trying to fit your Christmas tree skirt around. You're able to adjust your skirt length and width however you want it and I go into how to make those adjustments in the tutorial itself. It's super easy peasy. You're gonna love this. When it comes to the pattern, the pattern I'm gonna have a link to in the description section and comment section below this video. It will just take you straight to my website, crochetwithtiffany.com, where you can find the pattern, purchase the pattern, print it off, and be ready to crochet with me. That pattern, I included a lot of information, and it's gonna be very useful information if you wanna make any adjustments, or if you don't want to watch the video all the way through to, to do the project, you just wanna to refer to the pattern. It's gonna help out a lot, I promise. <laughs> all right, when you are ready to go, let's go ahead and dive into what materials I used to make the vintage crochet Christmas tree skirt. All right, so the materials that I used for my vintage Christmas tree skirt included yarn that is cozy wool loops and threads. This is the color fleece. It is a size six weight yarn, super bulky, super chunky. That thick weight yarn is going to help to make the project work up faster. It will also help it to be a little thicker and have those cozy vibes. This particular yarn I absolutely love for those rustic homey feels that I just completely connect to. This is my favorite to work with. Obviously I have a few projects that use this yarn. I used 2,309 yards of yarn, a total of 26 of these skeins. That might seem like a lot. For me personally, I made this Christmas tree skirt very large. That was my personal preference. Feel free to dial it back a lot <laughs> if you want to. It'll be super easy to do so and then you won't need as much yarn. Okay, I also included in the pattern a swatch and a ton of information on the stitches and the numbers and the, the count that you can reference. So that way, if you wanna dial it back and know how much yarn you're gonna need, you can absolutely do that. Now, if you are allergic to wool and you need a substitution yarn, my favorite substitution yarn for the Loops and Threads Cozy Wool is Loops and Threads Charisma yarn. Very, very similar, except for the Charisma yarn is 100% acrylic. The one drawback though to the Loops and Threads Charisma yarn is it is a size five weight bulky chunky yarn thinner than the size six weight super bulky super chunky yarn that I used in the project. So if you are going to go down to that skein you will need to make adjustments to the number of stitches that you have in each row and the number of rows you will need to make in order to achieve dimension. But like I said this pattern is super easy to do that. Seriously like it won't be a problem at all. You'll catch on, you'll be like, oh, I get it. Okay, this is gonna be fine. Okay, the crochet hook that I used is a K 10 and a half or 6.5 millimeter crochet hook. Very important to have this size crochet hook with these stitches because it is a super bulky, super chunky yarn. We want our stitches to be puffy, squishy. If you go smaller, your stitches of the yarn will be smaller, everything will be tighter, and you might end up with a much more rigid Christmas tree skirt, which won't capture the same vibe we're going for. Okay, you can absolutely go a little bit bigger if you want to, and that will make your stitches even more drapey, loosey-goosey if you want, but I'm gonna let that be up to you and your personal preference. Just know, smaller crochet hook will equal tighter stitches, larger crochet hook will equal looser stitches. 
to what I used. You'll also need a pair of scissors, obviously, a lot of cutting, a lot of mixed things that we're doing here, a yarn needle, tapestry needle, a lot of ends we're gonna weave in, a measuring tape is optional just to make sure you're staying on track with the dimensions that you are going for. And stitch markers will be helpful for two different reasons. One, it may help you if you put a stitch marker on the end of each row so that way you can quickly count what row you're on and what you need to do. And it will also help when joining pieces together if you like having pieces joined together, like pinned together as you're joining them. That will be extra helpful as well. All right, I'm gonna have a link to everything you see here in the description section and comment section below this video, including a link to the substitution yarn, just in case you need it. That way, if you need some help or if you just wanna make it easy peasy, just click the link, purchase the item and have it shipped directly to you. Not a big deal. Otherwise, if you're ready to go, go ahead and grab everything you need to make your vintage Christmas tree skirt and let's get started. Before we even get started crocheting, figure out how wide around the circumference or diameter the base of your Christmas tree is. I made my pattern extremely adjustable because I understand that all trees are very different or have very different size bases, especially if you have a real Christmas tree or if you're working with a fake Christmas tree base and you just have like that really skinny stand right there. So depending on how many inches around or the circumference of the base of your tree, Divide that by 11 because we're making 11 panels and that will give you an idea of how many stitches you will need to make in row one of your panel that you're making. In the pattern, I have a whole swatch, breakdown of so much information. It'll be easy peasy. I even have some examples for you to look at if you need a reference to help you out. So that is important to start with. My tree is fake. My base is approximately 28 inches in circumference around. That's what I'm working with going around. And it doesn't have to be snug against the base. It can be a little ways away, which is totally fine, especially if you have a stand that you're trying to work around. Just get a dimension so you know where to start. Okay, so my panel will start or begin with seven chains or six stitches across. So I'm gonna start by chaining seven. Begin with a tail long enough for me to weave in my end, create my slip knot, attach my crochet hook. Awesome. So chaining seven, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so for row one, we're gonna go ahead and half double crochet in the third chain from our crochet hook. One two, three, half double crochet. Awesome. The skipped two chains count as a half double crochet. So technically we have two stitches right now. One, two. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm, I have stitch markers out. Your choice, stitch markers are optional. I'm gonna go ahead and place a stitch marker in that second chain to identify that is a stitch space. So that way I can stay on count. Then all we're doing is making one half double crochet stitch in every chain all the way across. For me, I'm gonna end with six half double crochet stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. Awesome. Row one. Oh, sorry, two, we're on row two. We're gonna start by chaining two. One, two, turning our work. Again, that chain two counts as our first half double crochet stitch. And really, it will always count as our first half double crochet stitch in this pattern. I'm gonna go ahead and grab another stitch marker. You're gonna use a lot of stitch markers here if you do this, so be prepared. <laughs> and the second chain. Great. For row two, that half double crochet, or that chain two counting as our first half double crochet, we're actually gonna let it take that first stitch space and work our next half double crochet stitch in the second stitch space. So skipping the first one and half double crocheting in the second one. And then we're going to half double crochet in each stitch space all the way across. Again, my count is going to be six half double crochets at the end of row two. So again, counting and also Marking that stitch is gonna help to make sure you do put a stitch in that space and don't skip it. We don't wanna do that. Row three, chain two, one, two, turning our work. 
stitch marker. There we go. And notice I'm not moving the stitch marker, I'm just adding. I'll get to that in a second. Okay, so chain two counts as our first half double crochet stitch, takes that first stitch space, make one half double crochet stitch in the second stitch space, and in every stitch space across. Again, I am going to end with a total of six half double crochet stitches. Okay, before I move on, I did wanna mention real quick, generally I do not like to chain and then have the chain count as a stitch and then skip the first stitch space because I generally do not like, like these holes that are created in the pattern. That's a big no-no for me generally, but I did that on purpose for this pattern. So if you're somebody who also doesn't like to chain and have that count as a stitch and then skip the first stitch space, hear me out, okay? because as we move forward in the project, they will start to even out, the holes will start to kind of fill in, especially with that super bulky, super chunky yarn that helps a lot. When we join the sections or the panels together, you can't even see the, the gaps anymore. They really just kind of disappear. Okay, believe me, I've made a lot and I wouldn't say that if I didn't notice that in the project. Second reason why this is actually super duper helpful is because it helps us to count our rows. Moving forward, we're going to have this pattern where we're going to have an increased stitch row and then two rows where we just make one half double crochet stitch in every stitch across and then increase and then one stitch every row or every stitch space, one stitch every stitch space. So to kind of keep on track on where you need to increase, where your increase row is, I will end up counting my gap spaces. I'll be like, one, two, increase row. One, two, increase row. <laughs> it's a way for me to stay on track. But also, keeping that in mind, the stitch markers count or on the side of each row also helps a great deal because then you can count, okay, one, two, three, I'm now on row four, refer to the pattern. I've done all rows up to 52 rows because I end at row 52 because I'm insane and I made a huge Christmas tree skirt. So I have every single row broken down. Just count what row you're on. One, two, three, I'm on row four. Row four, here's what I'm supposed to do. This is how many stitches if I started with chaining seven and then six stitches in row one. How many stitches I should have. Broke all that down for you. Okay, so row four is an increase row. So I'm gonna go ahead and chain two. One, two, turning my work, grabbing another stitch marker, okay. marking that second chain. Because it's an increase row, I'm going to make my first half double crochet stitch in that first stitch space. So that way it looks like I have two half double crochet stitches in that first stitch space. I know it may not look like that because it's a chain two, but it counts as that, two stitches in the same stitch space. Then making one half double crochet stitch in every stitch across. And then when we get to the last stitch space, make two half double crochet stitches in the last stitch space. For me, I'm gonna end with eight stitches. So one, two, three, four, seven, eight. I'm gonna work that up with you again to make sure you kind of get the rhythm of the pattern before I let you go. So chain two, one, two, turn our work, marking that second chain. Very cool. Okay, so we just did an increase row Next row will just be one half double crochet in each stitch space all the way across. Again, the chain two counts as our first half double crochet stitch. We will skip that first stitch space, make one half double crochet stitch in each stitch across. We will now have eight half double crochet stitches at the end of row. One, two, three, four, five. Row five. One, two, three, four, five, six. seven, eight, chain two, turning our work, moving a little bit faster now because I think that you have an idea of what we're doing. 
Okay. Second row after the increase. Also, it's row one, two, three, four, five, six. Refer to the pattern. Row six. Oh, we're just making one half double crochet stitch in every stitch space across. Skipping first stitch space. Total eight. One, two, three, four, eight. Awesome. And now increase row. Another way you could check, look for the holes. Oh, here's a hole. Oh, here's a hole. Okay, I got two holes. Next is increase. So chain two, one, two, turning our work, marking that second chain. Increase row, we will actually put a half double crochet stitch in that first stitch space. So there's two, eight up. Oh, don't stop. We got our stitch marker placing our stitch space. Last stitch space, put two half double crochet stitches. So then nine and 10, perfect. We're gonna stick with an even number. Okay, so I started with six, increase row, added two, went to eight stitches in every row. Next increase row, added two, so now I'm at 10 stitches each row. So every single increase row, we add two stitches, increase in the first stitch, increase in the last stitch, so it should stay an even number. All right, so I think I'm gonna go ahead and leave you on that one. I think you have a good understanding of what to look for. Know that every row, we're gonna chain two, and every chain two counts as our first half double crochet stitch on the, the one, Stitch space in each row, you're gonna skip that first stitch space and just make one half double crochet in each stitch space across. In the increase rows, it's two stitches in the first, two stitches in the last. Remember, the chain two counts as your first half double crochet. So chain two and then half double crochet in that first stitch space to count as your increase. I hope that makes sense. Refer to the pattern if you need to. That way you can keep on count. If you need to have a whole bunch of stitch markers to help you to find where the last stitch space is and to help you to keep count on what row you're on, it's all helpful tips for you. The only thing that you have left to do is now grow your Christmas tree skirt, however many rows that you want in order to achieve, achieve the size Christmas tree skirt that you want on the outside. Super easy peasy, way easy to adjust. I went to row 52. I ended with a total of 40 stitches in each row. That's where I stopped and that's where I will meet back up with you. So exciting. I hope you guys absolutely love this and are having so much fun. All right, and 40, awesome. Okay, I made it to the very end of row 52 and I made my humongous panel here, and I'm ready to tie off my work. Okay, so cutting a tail long enough for me to weave in my ends, yarning over, pulling tail through, tie off, done. Okay, we wanna make 11 of these, <laughs> 11. So that's gonna take a little while. I understand. Feel free to just continue on with me in the video so you can see the next step. It's going to be awesome. Or feel free to pause the video, make the steps, and then come back. Whatever you choose to do. Okay, I do want to mention though, I had to add more yarn to my panel. If that is something that you end up finding you need to do, I have an incredible video for you to watch. What It's all about my favorite way of joining more yarn to a project. My favorite technique is the invisible join. Oh my gosh, it's incredible. You've seen me do it so many times if you've seen other videos of mine and you've gotta check it out. But there are definitely some amazing tips, tricks, different ways that you can join yarn to a project. I do have a video up here for you to watch in the cards if you would like that tip. I'll even have it in the description section for you so that way you have a video to reference to help you out. All right, so weaving in your ends real quick. I think it's a smart idea to weave in your ends as you go. That way you're not incredibly overwhelmed at the end. My favorite way is going to the back of the work. I'm gonna keep the front of the work where the two rows, where it's two rows here. It's, so it's a two row count, and you can see that or spot that by kind of seeing the line here. So two, two, two. I'm gonna keep that on the front 
So my back is going to have just the one row and be like the odd count. I'm gonna go underneath the stitches one way and then over the top of the last stitch that I just went under so I don't undo everything I just did and go back. I'm gonna try to go through some yarn strands so the fibers cling to each other for an extra good hold. This way of weaving in your ends works really well for me, but there's many ways that you can do that. If your ends are just being extremely stubborn and they do not wanna stay woven in, I love adding the Aileen's Fabric Fusion Quick Dry. Just a little dot of that will keep it in place, dry flexibly, be completely invisible, and be fine in the washing machine. It's my little trick if my ends are being stubborn. Sweet. So yes, you have 11 panels to make, depending on what size you're going for. Go ahead and make them all consistent, all the same size. I will meet back up with you when you are done. And we will do the next step, which is making the really pretty decal applique on the front. After you have made all 11 of your panels, the next thing we're going to do is add the really beautiful applique on the top of each panel. Now this is obviously an optional step, so if you do not want to add the applique on the top of your panels, feel free to skip this step altogether and move straight to joining your panels together. You can find this in the timestamp section of the descriptions and just click on that and it'll jump you straight to the next step in this process. The applique detail portion of the panels I think is absolutely stunning. It's one of those extra special steps that you can do to elevate this tree skirt and take it from a basic pattern to one that looks like it was advanced level, super creative, something you would purchase from a store, but it's not hard at all to do. So we have a guide for our design. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I placed my stitch markers. And then after you get a feel for it, you can obviously change things about, move things and get creative on your own. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and grab our stitch markers. And I'm using two different colors. I'm, I have purple and orange. I'm doing this on purpose so that way I can identify my outer line and my inner line. I'm also going to go ahead and have a completely different color, here I have red, to identify where I want a stopping point, where I do not want my applique, my details to go past. And for me, when I did this before, I just kind of like placed it right about here. And I was like, I do not want my details to go beyond this point. This is not something that you necessarily need to have exact. It's all personal preference, but that is just a good guide, especially when you are kind of putting together your pieces. Okay, so we're gonna start at the bottom here. My panels are all very large and I completely understand this and I know that there is variations that can be done. I'm gonna tell you where I placed my stitch markers and why and kind of help guide you on if or where you should place your stitch markers if you have stopped sooner than I have, okay? And your line is, you don't have as many stitches in your rows that I do. So my last line here has 40 stitches. What I did is I took the 40 stitches and I divided it by four. So there's four quarters. So I placed my first two stitch markers, my purple stitch markers, 10 stitches in from one side and 10 stitches in from the other side, all right? And then to keep things kind of even, now I know there's 20 stitches in the middle. There's gonna be three different sections here. One, two, three. I'm like, okay, 20 divided by three, can't go over. I'm gonna go ahead and do six. So I went six stitches in this way, six stitches in this way. So there wasn't an exact number in between that I needed it to be perfect, but I needed to know that this was gonna be even, this was gonna be even, that this part was gonna be even. Okay, next I decided that I wanted to kind of have everything close, not too spread apart. So I went every five rows, I placed a stitch marker. So five rows up, two, four, five, right here, I placed an orange stitch marker right in the middle of the row. And I placed this stitch marker in the fifth row in the 19th stitch inward. 
So from one direction, I went to the 19th stitch, but really it's the center stitch, or if it's an even number you have here and it's, it's hard, then you divide that number by two and then just pick one of them. <laughs> one side or the other, it's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. Then five rows up again for me, and I placed, so this is gonna be row 10. I placed a stitch marker, row 10. Oh, here, gotta switch my page. I have this all written down too, so if you want any reference points, it's all in the pattern. So in row 10, in the 12th stitch space from each side, so I went 12 stitches in this way, 12 stitches in that way, placed my two orange stitch markers, and then I placed the purple stitch marker in between these two stitch markers, okay? Then five rows up, two, four, five, orange stitch marker. This is 15th row and in the 15th stitch for me. Okay, right in the center of that row, five rows up. Row 20, I placed a purple stitch marker in the six stitch space in, so six and six. Again, doing quarters, six and six. And then here in the middle, I just went ahead and did five stitches inward from each stitch marker. Okay, and then five rows up right here, takes us to row 25, placed an orange stitch marker in the 12th stitch space, so right in the middle. And then the orange stops and five more rows up. I placed a purple stitch marker in the 10th stitch or middle stitch of that row. And then I stopped there because I have my stopper stitch marker here that's like, do not go beyond this point. We're good. Okay, the other thing I did is I, honestly, I put the, per the red stitch marker, my stopping point stitch marker in a row. I just eyeballed it and I was like, I don't want my design to go past this point. I counted how many rows were in that section and I was like, how can I evenly divide that up? And I was like, oh, every five rows sounds like a really good number to keep consistent. So that's another way for you to gauge if you would like. All right, so once your stitch markers are placed, this is very exciting. We're gonna turn our work sideways and then we're going to grab yarn have four different balls of yarn. And I have a lot here, my balls are pretty massive. You do not need one skein of yarn per stitch marker here at all. Literally, you could take just one skein, divide it into four balls, and you should have enough yarn. We're not using a lot of yarn here. This is honestly scrap yarn. It's the same yarn that I used for the project. I just had this left over from a previous project that I worked on, and so that's why they are so humongous. <laughs> so. In the pattern, I'm going to refer to my stitches as the one closest to me is stitch one, stitch marker one, next one, stitch marker two, stitch marker three, and stitch marker four. When I am referring in the pattern or referring further in this video, I will be referring to the line started from a certain stitch marker. So I'll be like, pick up the loop from stitch marker one. So I'll look at the, the stitch marker one and I will follow the line and then pick up the loop pick up the loop from stitch marker three. I'll find stitch marker three, I'll follow the line and pick up the loop wherever I'm at. So that is how I identify which loop we are picking up, okay? Okay, let's go ahead and begin with stitch marker one. This is so much fun. I am so excited to show you this because it is so easy and it's a way to quickly elevate a project and make it look complicated when it's not. So starting with the tail long enough, weave in the end so we can clean everything up at the end. We're going to slip stitch into that stitch space marked by that first stitch marker. Slip stitch, great. Now it's your choice if you want to remove the stitch markers after you pass them. I personally keep them there. I don't remove them until I have completely finished with my applique, just in case I wanna go backwards and change something up. Again, that will all make sense as we go forward. Okay, purple stitch marker. Another awesome reason to color code. So I'm going to go purple stitch marker to purple stitch marker. I'm going to make a single crochet stitch on top of the panel in that direction, okay? It does not matter how many stitches it takes you to get to that stitch. If you're somebody who wants to make really big loops, really big stitches, that's fine. If you're somebody who wants to make a bunch of really little single crochets, 
all the way up to that next stitch marker, that's perfectly fine. I don't have a set number for you because it's really up to you on how you get there. The other thing is it doesn't have to be perfect. It does not have to be a perfect diagonal straight line. In fact, it is the imperfect lines that seem to be the most appealing, the most aesthetically pleasing, <laughs> if you will. So do not get hung up on perfectionism here because it is the imperfections that actually look better sometimes, especially in this process. All right, so how we will go about making a single crochet stitch on top of our work. See where my yarn is coming out of the work here? I'm gonna actually place my crochet hook where it's coming out, so that same stitch. So place it from the front inward. And then I'm gonna look at my crochet hook. I'm gonna look at this next stitch. And I'm gonna be like, okay, so about that direction, I'm gonna pop my crochet hook somewhere. It could have been here. It could have been there. As long as your crochet hook is pointed towards the next stitch marker that we are aiming at, let your crochet hook guide you. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and pop it here. It's in that direction. I'm going to yarn over, pull that yarn through the work. Have the stitches be loose. This is super important. We want all of the single crochet stitches that we make on top of this work to be very loosey-goosey, very loose. Because if they're tight, then your work is gonna warp and it's going to all kind of bunch and it's, that's not what you want. We want everything to really lay really pretty on top. So loose stitches, pull, yarn over, glide, single crochet. All right, so this is where my stitch came out of. You can see that from here, okay, there. Insert crochet hook from where my stitch just came out of. Okay, from front to back, diagonal line. So I want it to come out roughly about there. Yarn over, pull through, loose, yarn over, pull through. Okay, where it came out of, top in. Oh, let me go a little small this time. I'm just gonna mix it up, because it doesn't matter. <laughs> there we go, in, line, Great. And then if you're noticing that your line as you're going, maybe let's say your, your crochet hook's kind of starting to point here and you're like, uh-oh, okay, I, I need to correct this because I my goal is to hit the stitch marker, then maybe come back and correct it with your next stitch and be like, okay, I need to aim for my stitch marker, crochet hook, be my guide. And then your line may be just a little bit kind of like Zig slightly zigzaggy a little bit, but that's okay. Again, there's beauty in the imperfection. And I think I'm actually gonna, I've done this a couple times and I'll show you how it looks if you have to make those like slight zigzag corrections. Awesome, and I'm coming upon it. Now, whenever I come upon a crochet or a stitch marker, I try to round, like go around it, go past it in a sense, instead of just kind of meeting up with it. I'll try to work past it. That way my stitches, whatever I am doing with them, they will have a more rounded look opposed to something more jagged. So going a little past it. Perfect, I've met up with my stitch marker. I'm gonna go ahead and make a big loop with my crochet hook, release my crochet hook, and that is how it's looking. If yours is really, really tight, feel free to go ahead and work back. Just keep going until you get it the way you want it. Uh, this, I'm not expecting perfectionism. I'm not expecting, if this is your first time doing this, for it to come super easy, for it to come naturally. Like sometimes this might take some practice, a few goes, okay? So again, patience with yourself, it's okay. This is a completely new skill. And it it's not a skill that means that it's 
difficult or a skill that means, okay, only intermediate crocheters can do this, only advanced crocheters can do this. A beginner crocheter can absolutely do this. It's just new. So sometimes practice, you know, it's different. All right, let's go ahead, grab a new ball, come back to the beginning, and we're going to attach to stitch marker number two. The next one up. Okay, long enough tail, slip stitch, or slip knot, and then we're going to slip stitch into that first stitch marker. I like to take my crochet hook from the back forward. That's just how I'm gonna do it to slip stitch to attach the yarn to the work. Awesome, okay. So what I am going to do here is I'm going to take my crochet hook and I'm gonna meet up with the very first orange stitch marker. I'm gonna dive right in. I'm not gonna chain one like I would do if I were working a blanket or something. I just slip stitch to attach the yarn to the project. I'm gonna dive right into slip or to single crocheting. So inserting my crochet hook into that same stitch space. Okay, so finding the diagonal line. I don't wanna pop my crochet hook out right here. Again, crochet hook will be your guide. There we go. Single crochet loosely. Loosely. Back where I started or came from. Single crochet. I'm gonna do a mix of some quick Sing, or small single crochets and longer ones, just because, just because. Okay, I'm meeting up with that stitch marker here. I'm gonna go just past it, because like I said before, if you just meet up with it, sometimes it results in something more, a jagged curve opposed to like a swoopy curve. All right, Here we go. Big loop, release crochet hook. Okay, let's go to stitch marker number three. Now see why it's important to have the four individual balls opposed to having just one ball and kind of doing all of it together. It'll actually make even more sense here in a second. Slip stitch. There we go. And meeting up with stitch marker number one, color coded. Okay. But this time we're going to angle this direction, so really let your crochet hook be your guide. Inserting crochet hook here. I don't want it to pop out right there. All right, met up with this orange stitch marker. And again, I'm gonna go just past it. There we are. And again, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to keep my stitch markers in place. I'm not removing them, I'm keeping them put just in case. We will be taking these lines and depending on which direction they are going, they are either going to overlap or underlap. The line will either go over or under. It is here with stitch marker number three that we start figuring out the pattern that we want for what's going to go over and what's going to go under. So here I have, if I were to continue stitch marker three, if I were to continue it forward, I know for a fact I'm going to go over the top of stitch marker one's line. See how it's gonna overlap here? It's gonna go over. So if, do I, I'm gonna have to choose. Do I want to go over, over, or am I gonna wanna go under, over? How am I gonna want this pattern to play out? It's now that I'm going to decide that. If I continue this line on now, I will be going underneath this single crochet st uh, stitch marker two's line but I'll still be going over stitch marker number one. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna continue my line from stitch marker number three to the next stitch marker. Color coded, super helpful. So let's keep going. Again, working that diagonal. So. Okay. 
All right, when you come upon the single crochet line here, we're just gonna single crochet over the top of it. So I went the stitch here, I went under, I'm gonna go underneath the single crochet line, I'm gonna pop out somewhere underneath it, single or yarn over, pull through, Lucy Lucy, single crochet, same stitch that Luke came out of, go in, diagonal line, awesome, and I'm going to work past the stitch marker, not just meeting up to it. There we go. Okay, so there's my line. See how it hopped over that single crochet line? So now it did one over. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this line. Okay. Next, before I hop straight to this line and go, I wanna look at stitch marker number four. So looking at stitch marker number four, it's going to go color-coded to this stitch marker. Okay, so if I go over here first, I'm going to go over this line. And then do I want to make this one first or make it second? Okay, so if I go over this line here, and I'll go under this line, so I'm going to go ahead and finish this line here. That way when I make this line, it will go over. And then I'll have an over under. Here, let me show you what, that, what I mean. That way it all makes sense. So I'm going to go ahead and work this one next. Color code, orange to orange. Working underneath. So where's my yarn coming from? My yarn right here, my stitch coming from right here. So from the front to the back, go underneath the single crochet line and pop out somewhere with your crochet hook guiding you to the next stitch marker. And over, and over, single crochet. Okay, working past, there we go, awesome. So now I have my over and under, over, under. So see how it's kind of having that weave effect? So cool, so cool. Okay, go ahead and big loop, release, and we're gonna go ahead and come to stitch marker number four and work stitch marker number four, that line. Slip stitching. And we're gonna go ahead and color code, single crochet all the way up to the next purple stitch marker. Awesome, just met up with the purple stitch marker here. You'll see we went over here. And then you'll see that that whole pattern is starting to really take effect. Okay, and now it really, really makes sense why we have each stitch marker has its own individual ball of yarn, so that way we can now control the direction that we want our path to go, and if we want that line to be an over or an under. And this is just gonna continue on throughout this pattern. When you look at all of our stitch markers, we are just going to use them as guides. So I have like a mess right here, but my two orange will now Go to the center orange and then cross here, go out and then meet up together here and then stop. My two purples are right here now. They're going to cross each other and come out diagonally, continuing their diagonal line. And then they're going to come up here and stop. And I'm going to go ahead and continue working this up to this these last two points where everything is done, where we can stop. I'm gonna let you decide, look at the crossovers, okay? So before you work a line, look to see, okay, do I want this to go over or under? What's going to cross in front of it here? Over, under. And even if you work up a line, and then you go to work another line and you're like, oh, I just did a whole lot of over, over, overs, I need to back up so I can have an under somewhere. That's why we keep the stitch markers in place so we can undo the line, go backwards, and then work it a little differently so we can have our weave be exactly how we want it. All right, go ahead and I'm gonna let you take the reins now and I will meet you back up here to show you how we're gonna close off the applique.
Okay. All right. I am ready now to uh, cut the yarn, weave everything in. We are done with the top here. Look at that design. Doesn't that look complicated? Doesn't it look just absolutely detailed and dainty delicate, just that extra awesome touch, but it really wasn't hard at all. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and cut tails here. Let go. So those were for these two loops and then these two guys up here. Okay, so for each loop, so tail, yarn over, tie off. There we go. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to close these two on the top by just tying a knot with these tails. There we go. That's one. And. Two. Take your crochet hook from the back of this stitch space and pull the tails to the back. There's that. And then this one. There we go. Awesome. We want to pull the tails to the back so we can weave the tails in at the back and let the front just be pretty and delicate, dainty, and that's it. So when we flip it over, we will go ahead and weave these in, cut the tails, and then be done. Isn't that awesome? Okay, so go ahead and repeat this process, what we just did for the detailed applique to either all of your panels, maybe do every other panel, like just let it kind of flow the way you want it to flow or get really creative and every panel just do something different. Just like we did here in the beginning, start with your four or however many, like honestly, if you wanted to do six, it'd be crazy. Uh, start with a stitch marker here at the base and then just kind of form like some kind of design here, decide where your stopping point will be and just, have fun. <laughs> all right, so go ahead and decide how you want all of your panels to look. And then the next thing we're going to do is join the panels together. All right, next step is joining the panels together. Now for me, I decided to do a pattern on one and then a blank on the next to kind of break up the pattern, make the pattern really pop. So that's what I'm going to do for my Christmas tree skirt. That's why you see one of these blank. Okay, so this, the join we're going to do, or the join that I'm going to do, is the single crochet stitch join method by making one single crochet stitch in the side of every row to join the two panels together. Now, if you want to, feel free to grab your stitch markers and put stitch markers and clamp the work together so that way as you're working, it doesn't shift on you. But again, it's optional. When you are looking at your panels, Make sure that you are looking at them so that, like for me, the blank side, the blank side is face up, the right side is facing up, which just means that every two rows, we're going to see the line. Then you wanna make sure that the lines kind of align with each other here. And I might even just kind of throw a stitch marker in here just to have an example. There we are. See how the line meshes? Okay, cool. I start my join at the smallest point of the panel and then work it to the largest point, taking the same yarn we've been using. All right, start with a tail long enough to weave in ends, create slip knot, attach crochet hook. All right, so the very first row right here, I'm going to insert on one side from the front to the back. I'm gonna to come to the next panel, find that stitch that's closest to the edge here, and I'm gonna go from the back to the front. I'm gonna start with a slip stitch just to join the yarn to the project. So slip stitch right there, great. Then I'm gonna chain one, and then I'm going to reinsert my crochet hook back into that stitch space. 
from the top to the bottom, then come to the other side from the back or bottom to the top. Yarn over, pull that yarn all the way through. So there's two loops on your crochet hook, then yarn over and pull through for a single crochet stitch right there. Next row down, find that side or last stitch. We're gonna work around that. So come inside of it, come to the next panel, row two here, find that last stitch. So we're gonna work on the other side of that last stitch. Yarn over, pull through. We're gonna make all of our stitches loose. We don't want anything too tight. We want it to lay really beautifully on the top. All right, so next row right here. Find that last stitch right before. This panel right here, row three, last stitch. Right there, yarn over, pull through. Yarn over, pull through. Great. So again, just to re-emphasize, every one of these lines right here only shows up when we've made two rows. So between each line, there are two rows. So we should make sure we have two single crochet stitches between each line. And if you do have a stitch marker, the stitch markers can be very, very helpful in both identifying where rows are and keeping the work from shifting on you so that way it doesn't come out like lopsided when you're finished joining. And that is all I am doing to join these two panels together. Now feel free, if you have another joining method that you think would look even better than this single crochet joining method, go ahead and use that. I think I was even going to play around with the reverse single crochet stitch otherwise known as the crab stitch, because I love that join stitch. I think it's really pretty. I just didn't think it was as beginner friendly as the regular single crochet join. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and continue on. I'll meet you at the very end just to show you how I finish this join so that way there's no questions, and then I'll let you go with instructions on how to join the rest of the pieces together. Single crochet. Awesome. Awesome, look at that. I think the one thing that I am most excited about with the single crochet join method is that the decal that we made, the applique, was also using a single crochet stitch. So it just meshes really, really well. It looks really, really good together. It looks like it belongs together. Super excited about that. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab my scissors. Cut tail long enough to weave in ends. Okay, then yarning over, pulling yarn through the loop, pulling tight for a tie off, and that is it for that joining method. Now don't worry if at the end here it's not perfectly closed off. When we make the border around the entire tree skirt, it will clean all of this up and make it look very, you know, put together and finished. It'll look great. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna join all panels together, except for one side. So literally take all these panels and join them all together like in a straight line-ish, leaving one opening, and that one opening will be the opening for us to put the skirt around the tree. If we just join all the panels together to make one big circle, then we won't be able to actually wrap it around the tree. We can place the tree on top of it but we won't be able to wrap it around the tree. So make sure you join all 11 panels together, but leave one, one opening that has not been joined and we will come back and we will clean everything up with a beautiful border for a finishing touch and then we're done. I hope that you are loving this Christmas tree skirt. I really do and just enjoying the entire process. All right, I will see you very soon when we have finished joining everything together for us to finish everything off. Okay, so wardrobe change. That joining section took a lot longer than I anticipated, which is fine. When it comes to this project, it's not gonna happen in a day and we just gotta be real with that. <laughs> so last thing guys, we are on the last step and this last step is really just putting a border around the whole thing to clean it up and make it look 
beautiful finished. And then I'm also adding, while we're making the border, I'm gonna add little cords to the border or the the opening here of the tree skirt. So that way we can tie a really pretty bow or just make a little tie in the opening to keep it closed. And it's just a really beautiful way of finishing it off. And it's super easy. So here we go. We're gonna go ahead and take our crochet hook and the same color yarn, working with the same thing. Okay, so I went ahead and I just rolled my Christmas tree skirt because this thing, mine is massive, mine is huge, but it's what I wanted. So that's just what I'm, working with here i rolled it so that way it was easier to work with because it is a lot if you wanted to roll yours also or however you are going to go ahead and position your tree skirt while you are working the border starting on the inside section here and we're going to go ahead and slip stitch our yarn to that top corner stitch right there i don't know if you've noticed this already but so far all of my ends have been woven in I was weaving in my ends as I went, so that way when the project was done, I wasn't completely overwhelmed with the number of ends that I needed to weave in. So slip stitching to attach the yarn. Awesome. Going to chain one and make two single crochet stitches in that same corner stitch space. So we have one and two. Great. Now we're gonna make our first cord. Chain 20. One, two, three, four, 17, 18, 19, and 20. Now, if you want to, you can make your cords longer. I wouldn't go shorter, because we wanna make sure we have enough to at least tie it together. I mean, I guess you could, it's your tree skirt, do what you want. But um, yeah, if you wanna make your cord longer, feel free, just know that the yarn that I approximated in the material section is chaining 20 here. Okay, so how we're gonna make the cord is we're going to go ahead and slip stitch into the back of the chain of the second chain. So first, let's find the second chain. V-stitch one, V-stitch two. Okay, I see the V-stitch. If I pinch it and I flip it over, all of a sudden it looks like a chain link. I wanna go underneath that middle that middle yarn, that middle strand only. So I'm only going underneath one and I'm leaving the V-stitch underneath. Slip stitch, great. And then just make one slip stitch in that middle loop of each chain all the way down for a total of 19 slip stitches all the way back down. So there's one, middle here, two, three, four, five, 18, and one more, 19, great. Make one more single crochet in that same space we made the two single crochet stitches already. So one more single crochet here. Awesome, and then we're gonna work along the side of the rows here. We're gonna make one single crochet stitch in the next nine rows. So we are going to go ahead, and if we look, we can still see these lines here, and each one of these lines only shows up after two rows. So I have one, two, then three, four. So just make sure you have two single crochet stitches between these two lines, and you're okay. So there's one, and then just find that last stitch here and place your crochet hook on the inside of that stitch to make your single crochet stitch. And again, like we've been doing through the project, loose stitches, not tight. Here we go. It's three. Four. Five nine, and we wanna to go to 10 because that first one counted as 10. So that was one, two, then three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and we wanna to go to 10. 10, it's at that 10th stitch that we're gonna make another cord. Okay, so we're gonna chain 20. One, two, three, and then do the same thing. Slip stitch into the back of the second chain, so finding the second V-stitch, flip it over, 
slip stitching underneath that one single loop there in the back, making one slip stitch in each chain all the way down for a total of 19 slip stitches for the cord. And then the repeat pattern we're doing along the side here is just one single crochet stitch in the next 10 stitch spaces. So because we stopped at number 10, just start your next stitch here at 11. So then it'd be one, two, and it makes it really easy to count to 10 based on like following these. So it'd be like two, four, six, eight, ten. 10. Stop just like we did here at the 10th stitch, make your chain or make your cord. Then come back down and one single crochet stitch in the next 10. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Tenth stitch space, cord, all the way back down. You're gonna repeat this all the way down to the very end. At the very end, there's 12 because well, for me there's 12 because I went to row 52. I basically did a cord every 10 rows. Okay. And then at the very end, I had 12, so I just went ahead and went all the way to the bottom, the 12th row, and then made my cord here at the very bottom. I'll go ahead and let you go, and I'll meet you here at the bottom to show you what I do just along the bottom of the work, especially as we're working our way around across the joins here, and then I'll tell you what to do next. <laughs> okay, we're doing great. We'll meet up very soon. 19 great okay i've just finished my last cord here we are back in that bottom stitch space i'm going to make two single crochets in this bottom stitch space one two and you may ask why tiffany why are you putting two here and then two in the beginning it's because at the at the corner of any corner of your work it just looks cleaner to me to have the three stitches there. So I have the three single crochets worked into this work and really this cord kind of stems off of that first single crochet. And in this corner here, the cord stemmed off of the first single crochet right here of the this side of the work. Okay, so when we are working along the bottom or outermost circumference of this tree skirt, we are just making one single crochet stitch in every stitch all the way around. That's it. Now for me, my last row that I worked in my tree skirt was an increase row and then I stopped. I didn't do increase and then two more rows. I literally just did increase and then stop. So when I work this single crochet row border around the whole tree skirt, it's not going to create any kind of wave. So we're, that's all we're doing. We're gonna go ahead, but just to make sure there's no questions and everybody is good, I'm going to work up to this first join, this first panel join. I'm gonna work over that so you can see how I work over this section. And then hopefully you find everything easy peasy and then I can just meet you at the end of the bottom. Okay, we're coming upon that first join here. So I'm literally gonna go ahead and work that single crochet stitch right here. Last stitch for this panel. I'm gonna hop over the join. I don't wanna put anything, any stitch in that join. I wanna find the first single crochet stitch. The first stitch space, that was a half double crochet. I don't know why I said single crochet, probably because that's what I'm working right now. But we wanna make our next stitch in the very first stitch space of the next panel. So finding that stitch, just jumping right over to it and continuing the single crochet. And what this will do is it will take those two panels here and it will just kind of cleanly glide right over that division, that join and clean that up and make it look really pretty. And that's it. That's all we are doing. Okay, this is going to take a while. It's a, for me, it's a big piece. I don't know how big you made yours, your Christmas tree skirt. But basically what we're gonna go ahead and do is work this single crochet border all the way around the outside circumference of the tree skirt. Then we're gonna meet back up at the other corner, the other opening, where we are basically going to be doing the reverse of what we did on this side. Okay, so I just wanna give you that count before you dive into it so that way you feel confident. All right. Let's go ahead and get going. We're so close, we're so close. I'll see you very soon. All right, making it to the last corner here, up to the, the second or next open side of the tree skirt. Okay, when we get to this next corner, we are going to start by making two single crochet stitches in that corner. 
So one, two, and then we're gonna make the cord, so chaining 20. One, two, three, four. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do my cord like we know, we've already gone over that. Okay, so we're gonna do the reverse of what we did. I got this. <laughs> we're gonna do the reverse of what we did on the other side. So for me personally, my last section here was 12 single crochets and then cord. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make my cord, I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna single crochet one more time into this corner space stitch space. So I have three single crochet stitches in this corner. Then I'm going to make one single crochet stitch in the next 11 stitch spaces for a total of 12 single crochet stitches along the rows. And then I'm after, or when I reach the 12th row, then I'm going to make a cord. And then I'm going to go back to my, okay, cord, one single crochet stitch in the next 10 rows, cord, one single crochet stitch in the next 10 rows, cord, one single crochet stitch in the next 10 rows, all the way up to the top innermost corner. And this will be the last corner. I'll go ahead and meet you up here in this last corner. And then just to make sure that you got the corner right, that we put the single crochet stitches where they need to be, I'm gonna make sure that I have that completely clear for you. And then the last thing is just making one single crochet stitch around each stitch space on the top and slip stitching to close. Then we're done. All right, so let's go ahead, work our way up this side. I'll meet you in this top corner and then basically finish this off. Okay. Last corner here, just finished my last cord. Back in that corner space, we're making two single crochet stitches. One, two, awesome. For those three single crochets right there. And then for the top innermost circumference of the tree skirt, we're just again making one single crochet stitch in each stitch space all the way around. This shouldn't take as long because it is the shorter, smaller part of the tree skirt where I place my crochet stitches because I don't necessarily want to place my stitches in that top loop here. Now, depending on how you work off your foundation row, there may be a full V stitch here and that's great. But for me, I just have the one loop. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna work between stitches to make my single crochet stitches so they're stronger and much more put together. So as I'm working, I'm gonna go ahead and place my stitches. See, here's my two loops, here's my stitches. I'm just gonna place my crochet hook between the two. We are not trying to meet a specific number of stitches to stay on count so much. Again, skipping over the join, finding the next stitch. Just try to place one single crochet stitch between stitch spaces all the way around to the top here, just to finish it off. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and quickly zoom through this top section, slip stitch into that first single crochet stitch that we made to begin the entire border, tie off my work, and then go see how it looks around my Christmas tree. All right guys, so what did you think of the Vintage Crochet Christmas Tree Skirt? I hope you loved the video. I hope you give the project a try and I hope you just enjoyed every step of the process. Even learning this new technique where we are just single crocheting on top of the work. How crazy is that, right? And it looks so cool. If you want to keep crocheting with me, I would love to keep crocheting with you. I've created a whole playlist of Christmas crochet tutorials, put them all together, and you can check them out right here. Let's go ahead and keep spending time together, crocheting together. I just have so much fun doing that with you. And remember, don't just crochet something to crochet something. Make a memory. I'll see you with my next video. Bye guys.